Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to episode three of Rippin' Lips. This episode, we're gonna be fishing a lake called Lake Edward. This is truly urban fishing. You're gonna hear some gunshots in the background, some sirens, some car alarms, and of course, you're gonna see some monster bass. Stick around and see what we get. Good cast at that. And look at this. Wow. Look at that. First cast out. And woo boy, he tore it up. Man, that was awesome. All right, 2.2, .2, two pounds, two ounces. All right, let's get her back in there. Okay, folks, in this episode, we're gonna cover the Texas rig and a couple methods I use to catch a ton of fish. We'll talk rubber worms, we'll talk rage crawls, we'll also talk Senkos. Now stay tuned for tips on rigging and how I like to fish the Texas rig. There we go. Up and over the log, little guy. All right, caught this little dink on the on the crawfish there. He seemed to like the black and blue crawfish. All right, let's get him on back. So the basic setup for the Texas rig consists of three pieces. You've got your bullet weight, you've got your hook, and I like these extra wide gap hooks. Then you also have your soft plastic. Now that can be a rubber worm, a crawfish, or whatever you'd like. Now how you hook this up is you take your hook through the tip of the worm out of the bottom. And as you run this up the hook, you want to twist this worm around and then tuck the eyelet of that hook right into the tip of the worm. Now what's nice about the Texas rig is you can rig this weedless. So what I do is I like to mark where this hook is going to go through the worm with my thumb and then I pass it right through the worm. Now to make this weedless, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skin hook this here. And now I've got a completely weedless Texas rig and that's gonna keep me from getting snagged. Now you're gonna see me use one simple technique. I cast it out, I let the bait sink down to the bottom and I watch to see if a bass takes off with it on that first fall. If it doesn't, I recreate that all the way back to me. So I'll slowly lift that bait off the bottom, I'll let it drop back down and I'll slowly reel in the slack while I'm dropping the tip of the pole down. What I'll do is I'll repeat that all the way back to me, watching to see if a bass takes it on the way down. The key here is to be patient and fish it slowly. Yes. What a nice little dink. Not bad. Jeez Louise. Love to see it. 
Look at this little guy. Teeny tiny little fish went after the crawfish. Eager, teeny tiny little dink. Good job. Good job. Now with this being a rock bank, I found Texas rigging a rage crawl to be super effective. Now it's the same concept when rigging it, so it looks just like this. And I fish this the same way as I do the rubber worm. over here, get away from that tree, get up and over that log. Come on, don't get tied up in the tree. Don't get tied up in the tree. A few moments later. Well, successfully soaking wet, but pulled out a nice one, last cast. Yee! Wow. Definitely need to go change after this one. Wow, last cast of the day. Went after that crawl. Nice, let's see how much he weighs. Two pounds, 13 ounces. Wow, it's a good one. Woo, soaking wet. But didn't get skunk for the day, so there's that. Woo. All right, buddy, have a good day. bass on my rubber worm. The dinkiest of dinks I think I've ever caught in my entire life. Got off the hook, got caught up in a plastic bag, and would have gotten trapped in there otherwise. We gotta clean up this place. I'm gonna clean up this damn pond. Well, went swimming again. Guess the camera cut off, that kind of sucks. But, had to save him. So much trash in this lake, man. It's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. He got caught up on a lawnmower. Under the water, caught up on a lawnmower. Three pounds, four ounces. Woo. I think I might need to go get a tetanus shot after that. Jesus Christ. Mark and I would often show up to the spot and it would be hammered with trash. The sad part about it was a lot of it was fishing trash.
what the lures are worth it. Mark had the idea to try and retrieve our countless lost lures due to snags on the rocks and really God knows what else. Ultimately, we only recovered a couple chatterbaits and crankbaits, but we were able to clean up quite a bit of trash. Spicy little guy. I'm pretty sure I caught this the other day because look, either you or I did. Oh yeah, I think I did. Yeah, because I just hooked him here. Yeah, that's a that's an old one. Yep. She gone. Let me see if I can get the light on. Actually, when they cleaned out the lake, they found like over 500 guns. Oh, did they? Mm -hmm. Bullet holes. Uh, and someone said they found a grenade. Great. <laughs> That's what I said. I, said. I wouldn't be surprised if they found some bodies in here, to be honest. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised either. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I know there's been some gunshots last night and a couple weeks ago. Yeah, you, that's going to be a lot of here. I would, I would honestly just say, just be careful. Yeah. Because, like, in this neighborhood, any day could be your last. Yeah. That's what I figured last night after the gunshots and I saw the bullets in the water up. Now, that's what I was like, who would fish in the back lake in yeah. this neighborhood? Yeah. 
And we have developing news in Virginia Beach. Lake Edward Drive is the focus of a death investigation. Police found the body of 28-year-old Marvin Gary in the water location yesterday evening. At this point, there is no evidence of foul play, but police say it is still an active investigation. I also found Texas rigging a Senko to be effective. I just leave out the bullet weight and fish the setup a bit slower. Got one. Nice. That's a pretty good one. Nice little fish. Nice little fish. Texas rig Senko. Man, this is a fun, fun way to fish. These little ones are really feisty out here. Just pitch it out and they swallow it right up. Here you go. These small ones love the crawfish. Teeny tiny little guy. I'll take it. She gone. Got a little dink. They've been messing with me, taking my worms and just running with them. They've been so small, I haven't been able to hook up on them. Put it on back. Look at all these fish right here running. You see them? Yeah. Yeah, something's running them right here. Try to get it out.
Boy, did I feel bad about this one. I really thought it was a monster bass running all those bait fish, but as it turns out, it was this dude. Um, I can feel okay about it because with the help of Mark, I was able to get the hook out and send this guy on his way. What a monster! Holy moly! Look at this guy! Ooh, 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 ooh. Yes! What a nice fish! I thought I was hung up. No, I was hung up on a monster. Jeez Louise, let's see how big this guy is. Oh. Woo! <laughs> Can you tell I'm stoked? Jesus! Was wet in the water after this thing. Goodness gracious. Four pounds, 14 ounces. Holy moly. <laughs> yes. Yes. Let's get you back in. You absolute monster. Goodbye, buddy. You have a good day. Hope to see you again. The music in today's episode was brought to you by my buddy Josh Whittle. Be on the lookout for some music from his new project titled Rooms. And as always, thanks for checking out the episode. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, Share it out if you feel so inclined, and stay tuned for the next episode of Rippin' Lips.